I literally just got my Proxmox 7.4 virtual environment server node up and running. I moved some of my servers over to the new Proxmox VE 7.4 server, only to have them announce version 8 five minutes later. So an in-place upgrade is required. Are you ready to come along with me? Let's go. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Starring Robbie Ferguson. Jeff Weston. And Henry Bailey Brown. Also featuring Bill Marshall. Here's the host of Category 5 Technology TV, Robbie Ferguson. The Proxmox 7 to 8 upgrade documentation is linked below in the description, but I want to walk you through the basic procedure. I'm going to do this on my single node, but if you're running a cluster, you can follow these steps on each individual node within your cluster to upgrade to Proxmox VE version 8. Since I'm using a single node and not a cluster, the first thing I want to do is notify my users of the pending update, which is going to require a small amount of downtime. If, however, yours is a cluster, simply move your virtual machines over to a different node before proceeding so that they can continue to run even when we reboot. Whoa, whoa hold on. Before you go anywhere, do you use Ceph? If so, stop what you're doing because you need to upgrade Ceph to Quincy before any of the rest of this takes place. So consult with Proxmox documentation for instructions on upgrading Ceph to 17.2. Then, come on back here. First of all, we need to upgrade to the latest 7.4 version of Proxmox VE. To start, make sure that you have at least 5 gigabytes of free space on your root mount point. In-place upgrades are carried out via apt. Before we do the upgrade, let's first make sure that our running version is up to date. I'm going to do this using the apt update command, followed by apt dist-upgrade. This is going to reach out on the web and make sure that I've got the latest upgrades for my Proxmox server. A dist upgrade often includes packages that require a reboot, such as a new running kernel. So I suggest rebooting your Proxmox server now. But before you do this, be sure to shut down any servers that need a manual shutdown, such as my Pinecraft server, where it's best to use the stop command before powering off. Once ready, with the node highlighted, click Reboot. Follow the prompts. And after a few moments, just refresh your browser until it comes back online. Once booted, verify that the version is at least 7.4-15. You can see that in the web interface following a refresh, or if in doubt, jump into the shell for your node and type PVE version. Looking at the shell for the node to be upgraded, you'll find a checklist application called PVE 7 to 8 included in the latest Proxmox 7.4 packages. It helps point us in the right direction for our upgrade. It doesn't do anything to the system per se, it just tells us what we need to do in order to upgrade. So we'll run PVE 7 to 8 dash dash full. When you run this command, it's going to generate a report. So all I want to do is just observe what kinds of warnings are output to my screen. I can see that I do have one warning, so let's scroll up and see what that warning is. And there it is right there. It just simply lets me know that I need to uh, consider stopping my virtual machines before proceeding. I can highlight each individual virtual machine and hit the shutdown button. That's going to send an ACPI safe shutdown command to the running operating system. Now, the one exception, again, is going to be a server such as my Pinecraft server, where there's a running game server that I want to uh, stop before I shut down the server. So just like any other time, I'm going to actually connect into that server first and go into the server folder for Minecraft and run the stop command in this particular instance. Then, once that's finished, it's safe to shut down. Now, all of my running virtual machines have been stopped. Every time you fix one of the issues, run PVE 7 to 8 again to see how things are looking. Once you're satisfied with the output, it's time to prepare your apt repositories for the upgrade to Proxmox 8. Let's change directory to slash etc slash apt, and then use the nano text editor to modify the sources.list file. We're going to change every instance of the word bullseye to bookworm in our sources.list file. Let's start there.
Once you've made all those changes, simply hit Control O and then Enter to output the file, overwriting the original file, and then Control X to exit. Next, if you're using the Enterprise repository, do the same to pve-enterprise.list found in slash etc slash apt slash sources.list.d, and then you're going to have to run this command to update your subscription. Since I'm using the non-subscription repository, I'll instead update the pve-install-repo.list. Of course, I'm referring to default names. Know that these list files could be named absolutely anything at all. So do an ls if you're not sure in that folder, and uh, you can edit each of those individual files appropriately. Now run the apt upgrade again. We're going to go apt update, and then we're going to type apt dist-upgrade. As you can see, there are tons more upgrades available now because we've now moved to the Debian Bookworm repositories. When you see screens like this, simply hit Q. Of course, some options are going to come up and ask you for yes or no questions. Answer those the way that you want to answer them. Just read what's on the screen and proceed with the option that you prefer. Keep an eye on this screen because it will ask you questions as it goes. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to skip ahead. If everything was successful, run PVE 7 to 8 again to check the status. And if all is well, reboot the system. The report generated shows that I still do have some warnings. So what are they? Well, simply that I need to reboot the server. What else do we have here? Uh, if I scroll up just a little ways with my mouse wheel, I can see that it's warning that I don't have five gigabytes free. So I can run my df-h command again and I can see, oh, that's okay. It's just warning me because I'm just a little bit shy of that. So it's telling me that I need to reboot in order to get the current version of the kernel. Um, so everything looks good. I mean, there's no warnings that are telling me that I need to stop what I'm doing. So I'm gonna reboot my current node. We are now running Proxmox VE version 8. I'm Robbie Ferguson for Category 5 Technology TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe.